Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to be doing this video. We are doing the first 48 hours after birth. So as some of you may know, I gave birth to my second boy on July 21st. And so it's been about two and a half weeks now. No, almost three. And um, I'm just now getting around to filming this video, but it's fresh in my mind and I've been through it twice. So I have lots of interesting things to share with you guys that I feel like don't really get talked about. Um, so if you are interested in hearing about my first 48 hours after birth, then keep on watching. So immediately after you give birth, the doctor puts the baby on your chest and you do skin to skin for about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on where you give birth. Um, that is if no complications happen and you, like the baby doesn't need to be taken to the incubator or the warmer or whatever it's called. Um, so both my pregnancies, both of my babies cried instantly and they were healthy. Thank the Lord. So they got placed directly on my chest and they stayed there for about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, while they're on your chest, they have the dad or whoever um, cut the umbilical cord and they're still laying on your chest at that point. So also what's going on while that is happening is they push on your stomach and you can kind of feel it and they, they tell you what they're doing. So, um, you know, she told me, all right, so now I'm gonna deliver your placenta. So you're gonna feel that. It might hurt a little bit from like pressure on your stomach and it didn't hurt. I had an epidural, so I just felt pressure, but it didn't hurt. And then also they stitch you up if you need to be stitched up. With Weston, my first son, I had a third degree tear and I had to get 44 stitches. Yeah, I know, it's insane. Um, the recovery process of that birth compared to this one I just had was like day and night. It was so much different. So with a third degree tear, um, you know, they stitch you up and it's a lot harder to recover from. It's hard to walk it's the pain is on a whole nother level if you guys want me to go more in depth um with my recovery process with a third degree tear let me know down in the comments i would love to make that video for you i have a whole ton of information that i can share about it and um yeah i mean it's it's really hard on the mother um recovering from a third or fourth degree tear so um yeah i will definitely make a video on that if you guys want to see it this time around, I had a second degree tear and I only needed five stitches. That to me was nothing. I was stoked. I didn't tear, I didn't have a third degree tear and I didn't need 44 stitches again because it was awful. After it's been like an hour and a half, you know, you'll try to breastfeed and you know, they'll see how that's going. And then they take the baby's measurements then they also will want you to try to go pee. It's day and night with both of my um, deliveries, you know, given that the other one was a third degree tear. So that one was a little bit different. I'm just going off of my second degree tear in this video. So they have you get up and try to walk. And since I had an epidural, they didn't know if I would be able to walk because they didn't know if it was, you know, worn off by then. I was able to walk. I walked over to the bathroom and they literally like, you bleed so much right after you give birth. So they took the sheet that I was laying on and they like wrapped it up like a big old diaper so I could walk to the bathroom without bleeding all over the floor. So I have this like big sheet <laughs> as a diaper. Sorry, Noah's right here and he's sleeping. So if you can hear him, it's just because he's, he's right there. So they have this big old sheet on you so you can go to the bathroom. So you get to the bathroom and uh, they want you to pee in this little cup to like see how much you're peeing because you have all of these fluids in you. So they want to make sure that your bladder is being emptied. It was really hard for me to pee, but I did. With Weston, I wasn't able to pee. So they had to put the catheter back in and it was a whole nother story. But this time I was able to pee. Um, the nurse will ask you if you want her to stay in or leave. And I had her stay in there with me just to help me because I was still pretty sore and I couldn't really bend over because you know, the stitches do hurt. So I had her stay with me 
she turned on the the water to kind of help me you know get the the flow going so i peed and then they have you put on these big huge pads like you think maxi pad no think like a big giant diaper like it goes all the way up your front and all the way up your back and then you put that on and you also put on these like mesh underwear and they are the most comfortable things that you will ever wear <laughs> they feel so good i love them then they also will have you spray your self with this little spray bottle it's like white and you just squeeze it and it just sprays water it's i have one it's in my shower and my son is sleeping right now so i don't want to go in there and wake him up but anyway yeah you spray it and it just feels amazing you spray warm water up there it kind of cleans it because you can't really wipe and um so that's just what they have you do so then they also have you spray this dermaplast and the hospital gives this to you and it's pain and itch spray and you just spray it up there and then you also put um these tux pads on your pad and i used them all so i don't have any to show you guys but they have you put those on your pad and they just feel they're so cooling and they feel so good and then they will also offer you a cold pack here i can take it out of the wrapper okay so they give you this like ice pack it's just really cooling and it feels amazing and you literally just set it on your pad okay let me back up so first you put this on your pad then you put the tux pads and then you'll spray yourself with the dermaplast and you pull it up and it's so good and you literally just twist this and it cools like the whole entire thing and they just have you sit on that and then when you need to change your pad again you'll just do the same thing um, you don't always have to use this cooling pad. It just feels really really good and Same with those tux pads. They also, you know, they're cooling but they also help kind of heal it and Keep it from itching and and all of that good stuff. They're like witch hazel pads So and you're done with that like you literally just change Your pad probably every one to two hours because you're bleeding a ton and then I didn't know this but they also come in every I want to say 15 to 30 minutes and push down on your uterus to get the blood to like come out and so that way like that makes you have to change your pad a lot more too but they press down on your uterus to make sure that it's like going back down in size and it's really really uncomfortable but they have to do it and i think they do it every 15 to 30 minutes for two hours after you give birth and then they don't really do it anymore like i think the next day while i was in the hospital they kind of felt my stomach to make sure that my uterus was you know shrinking back down but they didn't like regularly push down on my stomach um another thing is they want you to check for like golf ball sized blood clots um to make sure that you're not hemorrhaging and thankfully with both of my pregnancies i didn't hemorrhage so i don't know much about that but i do know that they want to make sure that you're not so they will constantly like have you tell them if you have like big blood clots and you know i kind of thought that i might have but they were just normal clots like you will have some clotting but if they're small then they're not worried about it another thing is if you have stitches it hurts a lot to sit down on that very uncomfortable hospital bed so you can ask them for a waffle cushion and it looks like this and you just blow some air into it and then when you sit it's just like a breath of fresh air <laughs> honestly it feels so good to sit on especially when you've had like trauma down in your lady bits so i would definitely recommend asking for one of those if your butt or your stitches are starting to get sore another thing i do want to mention is i didn't have this at the hospital but when i came home i used this so this is just witch hazel and this when i ran out of my tux pads you can buy them at the pharmacy so i mean if you run out like it's not a big deal but when you run out of your 
Tux pads, you can just get the witch hazel and spray some on your pad and even put some in a spray bottle and spray it like on your lady parts if you run out of the dermaplast and it just it's so cooling and it feels amazing so i would definitely definitely recommend getting some witch hazel and it's also really good to put on your skin to help clear acne by the way so you'll be changing your pad all the time because you're gonna bleed a ton and honestly you bleed for weeks like three weeks like i'm still bleeding and you know a lot of women think that you bleed for the first couple of days and then you're done but don't be surprised if you bleed for like a month because I have <laughs> another thing to expect is when the nurse comes in to check your vital signs they're also gonna ask you what your pain is at and that just helps them you know track your pain obviously and then they can give you pain medication if you need it with Weston um, they had me take some oxycodone because my stitches hurt me really really bad like I couldn't walk for two weeks you know I'm being honest I could not walk so they had me take that they kept asking me this time if i needed any because i did still have some stitches i did have a second degree tear um but i passed on the oxy um because the like ibuprofen and the tylenol was just fine so you know expect the nurse to ask you what your pain is quite often um they monitor your pain meds so they'll give you your tylenol and your ibuprofen every six hours but be aware that they do come in and wake you up all the time so you know the hospital stay it's not the best because you're constantly being woken up um you know whether they're checking on the baby or they're checking on you or they're giving you your medication you know checking your vitals whatever it is uh the hospital you definitely don't get very good sleep i will say that after you have the baby you know after they're done taking the baby's test and you know you've peed twice because they want to make sure you've peed twice after that they kind of leave you alone for a little bit like they still do come in and check your vital signs but you're not restricted to your bed you can walk around you can take a shower um, with Weston I wasn't able to take a shower but with Noah this time around I think you know I was up walking around four hours you know just literally walking around like I walked to the little like snack shop that they had i mean it was on the same level and it was just like a couple doors down but i walked and they got myself you know a yogurt or whatever came back and was just standing up i did my you know i took a shower i did my makeup so it really just depends on how you feel but you can walk around and you can still do things you know shortly after you give birth if you feel up to it so when they have you um nurse your baby they're gonna check your latch and make sure that baby is latched properly. Keep in mind that you're kind of like really exposed <laughs> everywhere, down there, up here, you're just kind of exposed. So any modesty or, you know, all of that is just kind of like gone out the window for the first like two days of your uh baby's birth because they're constantly checking down there if you have stitches to make sure your stitches are okay and they're always looking at your boobs to make sure your baby's feeding right and latched right just be prepared to be really exposed you're also gonna um want to check your baby to make sure that your baby is peeing and pooping they will ask you multiple times a day how many poops or pees has your baby had since i last came in here how many poops or pees has your baby had they'll have you mark it on a sheet just to keep track and that's just to make sure that baby is flushing out their system but also that they're getting your colostrum which is the first milk that you produce and it's only a little tiny bit but it's it's really really good for them and keep in mind also that baby's first poop is disgusting it's called meconium and it's black and it's like tar like you have to scrape it off of their butts it's disgusting but they only have like one of those maybe two and then it's like normal poops so it's not that bad but you know you can have uh the dad change that one because it's pretty gross and just say that you're tired and that you're in pain and then he has to so depending on 
you know, how baby's doing and everything. A few hours later, you know, probably like 12 hours later, they will ask you if you want the baby to have their bath. And you don't have to because the vernix that's on their skin, um, it's like white, it's really moisturizing for them. So you don't have to have them take a bath if you want to keep the vernix on them. But I decided that, yeah, we could give him a bath. So they'll give your baby a bath and comb his hair and get all that stuff out of his hair or her. Sorry, I'm just saying his because I have two boys. So it's just like natural for me to say his and he and all of that. So they'll comb their hair, they'll get all of that stuff out of their hair, they'll wash their body and make them nice and clean. And then after that, they will do their vitals and then they'll swaddle them back up and probably have you feed them. Literally, postpartum, like 48 hours, is just a blur of changing your pad and bleeding a ton, trying to breastfeed as good as you can don't be too hard on yourself because both baby and you are learning if it's your first this is my second but i still had to keep in mind that he had never breastfed before so i had to understand that it wasn't going to be 100 percent easy because i had done it before because it doesn't matter your baby hasn't and then you also have to try to poop yourself and that's really scary if you tear I've never not torn, so I don't know if it's scary or not for that, um, for any other reason. I was just scared that when I would push, that my stitches would burst because you don't realize it, but your um, I don't I don't know what it's called, but the muscle down there is very like sensitive like if you cough or sneeze you don't realize it but that muscle actually moves down there so pushing you feel like you are pulling your stitches apart and it really really hurts so i recommend taking like stool softeners drinking prune juice if you're having trouble with that just to kind of loosen it up a little bit so that it comes out a lot easier i um didn't have a problem going with Noah. I didn't tear as bad, so I wasn't too worried about it. But with Weston, I literally tore almost all the way to my butt. So I had a really, really hard time going and I was really, really scared. So the stool softeners, the prune juice, the coffee, it all kind of helped and then it wasn't bad. I never tore any of my stitches. It's gonna feel like you are, but you're probably not, so don't be too worried about it. So Basically, you stay in the hospital for two days after you give birth, and that's just pretty normal. I think most insurances cover two days after birth, so they'll just keep you. I asked to go home the next day when I had Noah. With Weston, I actually stayed three days because my stitches were so bad and I couldn't walk, and so they just kept me to monitor my pain and everything like that. But with Noah, I was feeling fine, so I was like, can I go tomorrow? Like, I don't need to stay an extra day. And they let me go. So if you are feeling fine, you can definitely ask to go home the next day. They may or may not let you, depending on the, you know, baby, baby has to pass all of their tests, make sure baby's healthy. And then you also have to be you know improving and showing them that like you're bleeding you're not like clotting or anything like that so you know there are different circumstances that may affect if you can go home early or not or if you have to stay an extra day um, but definitely ask if you feel like you want to go home the hospital beds definitely are not the most comfortable thing i just like being in my own home um, definitely with weston it was kind of nice being at the hospital you know having the nurse is there to help you with your baby, help swaddle them if you couldn't figure it out. Having an extra set of hands, it was really, really nice. But also keep in mind that they come in every three to four hours to do your vitals. And so you don't really get the greatest sleep because baby sleeps quite often, but you know, sometimes baby's awake and the nurses aren't in there. And then right when baby falls asleep, you can go to sleep. And then 30 minutes later, the nurses come back in. So keep that in mind. That's another reason why I wanted to go home a day early. All right, you guys. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Um, but I also don't want to be repeating myself too much because really the first 48 hours, it's really repetitive, especially the first 24 hours. So I'm sorry if I kind of repeated myself a little bit, but that's kind of just what it is. 
<laughs> anyway, um, I've been thinking about filming a breastfeeding video. I have had success breastfeeding both of my kids so far, and you know, I'm really proud of that, and I'm really grateful because I know a lot of people do struggle with it. Um, but I do have some tips and tricks that I do to kind of help my supply and I because I know that's like a big thing for a lot of people is they don't produce enough milk and it's definitely helped me and I have already been able to pump like over 500 ounces of milk and Noah's three weeks old almost so if you guys want to see a video on like breastfeeding and pumping and all of that stuff let me know down in the comments if you guys want to see a pumping breastfeeding kind of video. I would love to make it if you guys want to see it. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, that way I know to keep making more videos like this because you guys enjoy them. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any new uploads from me. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!